With the nation's shift towards wastewater reuse to combat water scarcity, coupled with existing concerns about heavy metals and toxins in our water supply, we must ask, is our drinking water truly safe? Welcome to the Ultra Healthy Now podcast, where your journey to feeling younger, sexier, and more energized begins. Dr. Nicole Srednicki, who specializes in high-performance health, will dive into practical, actionable tips and strategies that can transform your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Join us as we uncover the secrets to living a healthier, happier life, mind, body, and spirit. Because true health, beauty, and happiness start on the inside. In the face of evolving water practices and contaminants, how can we secure pure, safe water for our health and future? Imagine pouring a glass of water, clear and refreshing. But what if that water, essential to our very existence, harbored unseen threats? In 2025, as our nation seeks innovative solutions to water scarcity, are we compromising the purity of our most vital resource? Hello, and welcome to Ultra Healthy Now, the weekly podcast where we dive into the journey of maximizing your health potential. I'm your host, Dr. Nicole Srednicki, founder of Ultra Healthy Human, where we specialize in high-performance health for high-performance people. With the nation's shift towards wastewater reuse to combat water scarcity, coupled with existing concerns about heavy metals and toxins in our water supply, we must ask, is our drinking water truly safe? Again, I'm going to say this. The nation is shifting towards wastewater reuse. That's disgusting. <laughs> Consider Sarah, a vibrant entrepreneur juggling the demands of her startup and family. Despite her heroic schedule, she prioritized health, eating organic, exercising, and ensuring her family drink tap water to reduce plastic waste. However, after months of unexplained fatigue and cognitive fog, Tests revealed elevated levels of heavy metals in her system. The culprit? Her home's tap water, contaminated beyond acceptable limits. So what's the issue? In 2025, to address water scarcity and budget constraints, several U.S. cities have initiated wastewater reuse programs, treating sewage water to be repurposed as drinking water. In response to the scarcity, cities like El Paso, Texas are pioneering wastewater purification projects aiming to transform sewage into potable water. Specifically in El Paso, um, they have embarked on a project to convert 10 million gallons of wastewater into drinking water daily. While this approach offers a solution to dwindling water supplies, it raises concerns about the efficacy of, of contaminant removal and the long-term potential health implications of consuming reclaimed water. So why is this an issue? Our existing water supplies are already burdened with contaminants. For example, Scottsdale, Arizona, where I live, water contains arsenic levels averaging 3.82 parts per billion, or PPB, uh, significantly higher than the Environmental Working Group, or EWG, their health guideline of 0.004. That is a huge difference. Similarly, hexavalent uh, chromium, a known carcinogen is present in 3.54 ppb, vastly exceeding the EWG's recommended limit of 0.02. Introducing reclaimed wastewater into the drinking supply could exacerbate the, this contamination uh, and these contamination issues if not meticulously managed. Most harmful contaminants in drinking water are per and polyfluoral alkyl substances, or PFAS, dubbed forever chemicals. PFAS are synthetic compounds used in various consumer products. They persist in the environment and human body, leading to potential health risks such as cancer and immune system suppression. Disinfection byproducts. While disinfecting water is crucial to eliminate pathogens, it can lead to formation of these byproducts uh, like THMs, and exposure to these have been linked to increased risks of bladder and colorectal cancer. Nitrites, 
commonly originating from agricultural runoff, nitrates in drinking water are associated with cancers and reproductive stress. And then there's heavy metals like arsenic and hexavalent chromium, which I already mentioned. These contaminants can infiltrate water supplies through natural deposits or industrial pollution, posing significant health risks, including cancer. And then there's radiological contaminants, elements like radium and uranium, which can leach into water sources, increasing the risk of cancer upon contamination. So the health effects of contaminated drinking water. There are, as I mentioned, cancer risks, long-term exposure to contaminants like arsenic, Hexavalent uh, chromium and disinfection byproducts have been linked to various cancers, including bladder, colorectal, and skin cancers. Neurological effects. Lead exposure, even at low levels, can cause cognitive impairments, developmental delays in children, and mood disorders. And then there's reproductive issues. Nitrates in drinking water have been associated with reproductive problems, including birth defects and miscarriages. So let's look at the government regulations versus health guidelines. The Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, sets legal limits for contaminants in drinking water. However, these standards often lag behind current scientific findings. For instance, the EPA's maximum contaminant level for arsenic is 10 ppb, whereas the Environmental Working Group recommends 0.004, based on more... um, up-to-date health risk assessments. This discrepancy suggests that current legal limits may not adequately protect public health. So you need to be aware and you need to do your homework. Arguments for and against water reuse. So for water reuse, there's resource conservation, you know, by reusing wastewater, this addresses scarcity, ensuring sustainable water supply for growing populations and the economic benefit because it would reduce the costs associated with sourcing and transporting fresh water. And then against, obviously, the health risks that we're discussing today, potential incomplete removal of contaminants can pose significant health risks over time. And then there's the public perception of the yuck factor, which may lead to public resistance against consuming reclaimed water. My personal opinion, while innovative water conservation methods are essential, they must not compromise public health. Rigorous testing, transparent reporting, and robust purification systems are non-negotiables. I think this is disgusting. We know that there's already too much that slips through the cracks with some of the government organizations, and this is a perfect example that they're allowing us to drink dirty water, and it's getting worse. So how do we identify this issue? You can actually get water quality reports from your city. You need to regularly review the local water utilities consumer confidence reports. Um, And then sensory indicators. Take note if you have unusual taste, odors, or discoloration in your tap water, which warrant immediate testing. I don't recommend ever drinking tap water because of all of these issues. Um, In my practice, I definitely recommend um, either using an RO system or there's many other water filtration systems, or you can even bring in, some people do the um, containers of water in their house, but you do want to watch out for the plastic. In my clinic, we only serve glass bottles of water to, again, get rid of some of that um, the exposure from plastic, but also making sure that we're giving clean water to our patients. Um, So these health implications, chronic exposure to these contaminants like lead can lead to neurological issues, developmental delays in children, and increased cancer risks. Um, When I look at patients' blood work, we see some of these. We see the inflammatory markers. We see heavy metals. I'm seeing more and more heavy metal exposure in people's blood. Um, And I think it warrants sometimes if you you only drink bottled water at home, even testing some of those bottled waters to make sure that they are pure. Because these heavy metals can actually accumulate in your body over time, and they will stay in there for years and lead to chronic health issues like Alzheimer's, cancer, um, um, and many others. So 
um, they actually accumulate in your organs. So it's quite scary if you're not trying to get rid of them. So we need to be proactive, um, test your water, regularly test the water. There are a lot of companies out there that do water testing. I think even Home Depot has like a very basic one. Um, and that's this will allow you to screen for different uh, contaminants, including these heavy metals and toxins. And then personal health monitoring. So you should be, you know, as I always talk about being proactive with your health, look at what's going on internally. We can actually check your heavy metals uh, in your blood. Um, we can look at like recent exposure versus long-term exposure. So there's many ways to test for this so you can understand and then move accordingly however you need to treat uh, your body. So you can always detoxify. You know, we talk about this on every podcast, but um, dietary measures, always, you know, incorporating in your diet, high antioxidant foods, things um, that have chelating agents like cilantro or chlorella, lemons, limes, onions, water, all of that are very good natural detoxifiers and supplements. um, There are many supplements that you can consider for this. Um, And if you want a list of some of these chelating supplements or even IV um, types, you can uh, send us a message if you go to ultrahealthyhuman.com in the contact section and just send us a note and we can send you a list of these supplements that we recommend um, to keep, you know, try to chelate some of this stuff out of your body. If you do have like chronic exposure to heavy metals, and that's, as I mentioned, when they start, the metals will start to accumulate in your organs. Sometimes you need to kind of step up the treatment and um, sometimes you need to consider doing oral or IV chelation. Um, Chelation is something that will bind these metals and get them out of your body, but you always should do this um, in a monitored fashion to make sure that your body's chelating um, these heavy metals out, but also not pulling out um, other essential nutrients that you need and also then being able to replenish and monitor what's going on just to make sure it's safe for you. Uh, I do a lot of chelation therapy in uh, my practice at Ultra Healthy Human. It works so well for people. So for people with that chronic exposure, um, oftentimes, so we would test, we would go through a series of of maybe weekly IV chelations, um, and then we would retest to see where all of their levels are. And we have a great success with this. Um, and so you can also just ignore heavy metals are in your body, but um, this can cause irreversible health damage. Um, It can lead to cognitive decline and organ issues. So please don't just ignore it. And um, some take-home tips for you. So awareness is number one. Uh, Be aware of what you're drinking. Get your water tested um, at, you know, find out from your city, what are these um, levels that are in the drinking water, and then be proactive with um, regularly detoxifying your body. Um, You know, I I mentioned doing a structured detox program. We've talked about the 21-day ultra healthy detox or the 10-day detox, but just on a daily basis, doing little things to try to keep your blood clean and get those toxins out. Um, Also, fiber is a great way to help bind some of that, um, the toxins and get them out of your body. If you're curious, you can test. Um, You can test what's going on in your body. You can test your blood for heavy metals. And um, um, there's other ways to test for heavy metals. They can test it in your hair, in your urine. Um, So there's multiple ways to test for it and then get them out of your body. Also, don't be scared after hearing about this. Make sure you're staying hydrated um, with a good source of water. So thank you for joining me today on another episode of Ultra Healthy Now. If today's episode sparked your interest in achieving your maximum health potential, um, or you have questions or are interested in understanding um, about heavy metals in your body, I invite you to connect with us. Uh, at ultrahealthynow.com. And you can explore our specially formulated supplements, ask questions, suggest topics for the Ultra Healthy Now podcast, or schedule a consultation. Join us at Ultra Healthy Human, where your health, beauty, and happiness start from the inside. Visit ultrahealthynow.com to start your transformation today. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Ultra Healthy Now podcast with Dr. Nicole Srednicki. To discover more, visit ultrahealthynow.com 
and jumpstart your wellness journey with our 21 day detox program, a total body reset, more energy, better focus and weight reduction. Our carefully formulated high quality supplements will aid in a new level of wellness. Don't wait, unleash the ultra healthy human within you. At Ultra Healthy Human, Eastern and Western modalities are combined with cutting edge technology to guide personalized health programs to help you tap into the limitless potential of your mind and body. Because true health, beauty, and happiness start from within. Remember to subscribe, like, and share this episode wherever you listen to podcasts. And before we sign off, I want to make it crystal clear that the information presented here is for informational and entertainment purposes only. This episode should not be considered a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. And while we strive to provide accurate and up-to-date information, the content discussed in this podcast is based on general knowledge and research available at the time of recording. Medical knowledge and guidelines can evolve, and what we discussed may not always reflect the most current research or recommendations. If you have specific health concerns or questions, we strongly encourage you to consult with a qualified healthcare professional or medical specialist who can provide provide personalized advice tailored to your unique circumstances. Every individual's health situation is unique and what works for one person may not be suitable for another. This podcast is a presentation of the Rich Dad Media Network.